Finding the area between two curves and integrating with respect to y might be two of the toughest topics in integral calculus or calculus 2. When you put them together, that makes quite a challenging problem. So in today's video, I wanted to show you a portion from one of my weekly live streams that I did recently, which I'm doing every Monday night at five o'clock Pacific time, where I went over integrating with respect to Y to find the area between two curves. If this is a topic that you have struggled with, I think you're gonna find this video very helpful. So be sure to stick around to the very end. And if I'm right, and you do find this video helpful, please do me a favor and hit that like button down below as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and jump into the example and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Sketch the region enclosed by the curves, then find the area of the region, same as we've been doing. Um, and the functions we have this time are x equals one minus y squared and x equals y squared minus one. So again, like always, first thing we wanna do is start by sketching our graphs, start by ske sketching our functions. So in this case, since both of these are given in terms of x, I'm just gonna leave them in terms of x and we'll just kind of talk about how we could actually graph those because that can be kind of kind of helpful. Um, so let's go ahead and put some labels on this one. So first of all, basically what we want to kind of think of, obviously you're probably more familiar with the opposite here. So like if you had y equals one minus x squared, y equals x squared minus one, I'm sure you might be familiar with how to sketch those. You would, um, you know, those would give you two different parabolas. Well, in this case, since it's x equals something in terms of y, x equals something in terms of y, what that's basically going to do is create the exact same situation that we would if they were switched, but it's just going to be like mirror imaged across the line y equals x. So basically, instead of this giving us um, like a, you know, instead of y equals one minus x squared, giving us a downward facing parabola, this is going to give us a sideways facing parabola. How do we know which way it's going to face? Well, the coefficient of our y squared term is negative, so it's going to be opening up toward the negative y direct or the negative x direction. I'm sorry, just like this one with the negative coefficient in front of the x squared term is opening up toward the negative y direction. This one is going to open up in the negative x direction. So it's going to look something like. OK, um, and the reason I put it here is same kind of thing as what this would do. This would be just a downward facing parabola shifted one unit up. Well, this is the same idea, except it's a downward facing parabola facing downward in the, the negative x direction, which actually is facing to the left, shifted up one unit or up one unit in the positive x direction, which is basically to the right one unit. Um, so essentially all we're doing is instead of thinking of it as, as up and down, think of it as left and right, where right is the positive x direction. So that would be like the equivalent of up in the y direction. It's kind of a weird way to think about it, but um, that's basically what that graph would look like. And then same kind of idea over here. This is going to be an upward facing parabola moved down one unit. Or in other words, since it's reflected in the y and x direction, it's going to be a rightward facing parabola shifted one unit in the left direction. So it's going to be like this. So I almost like to think of it as like, what if gravity went sideways in these kinds of situations where like X and Y are being flip flopped like that? Just think of X, think of right as up and think of uh, left as down. And then basically it's kind of the, the same idea here. The positive Y direction it behaves as the positive X direction did before. So up is like the old right and down is the old left. Right is the old up and left is the old down. I don't know if that makes things more confusing, but um, you could definitely, just like we kind of talked about in the last example, plug in some points and see what you get. You should get something that looks like this. So now we want to think about, do we want to take horizontal slices or vertical slices? Well, let's think about our slices here. First of all, our horizontal slices, as we go through this region horizontally, this red line is going to intersect uh, basically on the right side of this region with this parabola right here all the way through from top to bottom of our region. This is the right edge that intersects with our red line here. And then similarly, this parabola over here is the left edge of this region intersecting with our red line all the way through. So this would be our left all the way through. This would be our right all the way through. 
Okay, so that's not bad. That's a pretty good sign that um, probably doing it horizontally might be a good option. But let's think real quick about what would happen if we do it vertically. Notice over here, we have this parabola being the top of our region intersecting with our red line and this parabola being the bottom of our region intersecting with the red line. But then as soon as we get to this point right here, it switches. We now have this function being the top and this function being the bottom, which is um, you know, different of what it was over here. So we would have to split this into two separate integrals in order to integrate this area if we were doing vertical slices. But horizontal slices, we didn't have to do that. So that's probably gonna be our best option is to go horizontally through it because always this is our left edge right here, which is this function. So this function is our left or bottom because it's in the negative x direction. And then this function is our right all the way through. That is the right edge of our area. So this is right, which is the same as the top function. Okay. Um, so that's typically going to be the case when you're, when you're integrating in the horizontal or splitting up, cutting up your function in the horizontal direction, your right function is now the top and then your left function is now the bottom. That is that is kind of a, a general rule of thumb, because like I said, when you're thinking about these kind of reflections in the X, Y direction, this kind of 45 degree mirror image like this, basically this now becomes up because it's the positive X direction. And this now becomes what used to be right because it's the positive Y direction. And therefore this is down and this is left. So it's kind of a weird, um, way to reorient the way you're thinking about the x and y axis but um, that's kind of the way that it's going to always end up working out so now to use the formula for my integral calculus cheat sheet again the link to that is in the description it's available for instant download it's only a few bucks should uh, save you a ton of time and effort working through integral calculus we're going to set up our integral as the top function of our region minus the bottom function of our region that's kind of the simple way to think about it um, so the top function, like I said, is going to be this one right here, one minus y squared. And we'll go ahead and put that in parentheses. And then we're going to do minus our bottom function, which is x equals y squared minus one. So then we'll put y squared minus one. We're going to integrate with respect to y. And then we need to figure out what are the edges here. Basically, what is the y value that uh, the y value range that this uh, region takes up? Well, you can see this region goes from here up to here in the y value. So basically where these two functions intersect with each other. So if we want to figure out where they intersect, we just set them equal. So we get one minus y squared equals y squared minus one and solve for y. So we would add one to both sides, giving us two. We'll add this y squared over here, giving us two y squared, divide both sides by two, take the square root of both sides, giving us y equals plus or minus square root of one, which is just pl um, plus or minus one. Uh, so whenever you take the square root of both sides like this, you always need to take the positive and negative square root. So plus or minus one is gonna be the bound. So we're gonna have minus one here, positive one here, and now we can go ahead and integrate. So first thing we wanna do is distribute our negative. So we're gonna have one minus y squared out here, minus y squared, minus negative one is plus one. Now keep in mind, we haven't actually integrated yet. Now we can combine our like terms before we integrate. So one plus one is two, negative y squared minus y squared is negative two y squared. Okay, and now we can actually integrate. So we can integrate this using the power rule. So we would raise our power by one, divide by our new power, and then plus uh, the integral of a constant is just two times whatever your variable is. Since we have a dy here, our variable is y. And then we would evaluate this from negative one to one, which just means plugging in your upper, your upper piece here. So negative two thirds times one to the third plus two times one. Put all this in parentheses, minus all in parentheses, whatever you get from plugging in your lower piece. So two thirds times negative one cubed plus two times negative one. Um, one cubed is just one. 
So that gives negative two thirds plus two minus negative one cubed is negative one times negative two thirds is positive two thirds. But then we have this minus sign here. So it's going to be minus two thirds. And then negative one times two is negative two. Then we have this minus sign distributing in. So we're going to get uh, positive two. So we have uh, two plus two is four minus two thirds minus two thirds is minus four thirds. If we want to add fractions, we need to get a like denominator. So the like denominator here will be negative four thirds plus 12 thirds, which gives us eight thirds. So eight thirds would be the area between these two curves um, within this region here. Well, I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe and hit that bell icon down below as well so you're notified of all my new videos. Like I said, this came from one of my live streams, which I'm doing every week, Monday night, five o'clock Pacific time. And if you be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell icon, you'll be notified when I go live each week so you can join and get your questions answered live on Monday night. If you wanna keep learning about integrals in the meantime though, I have made lots of other videos on that. Just go ahead and click on one of those over there and I'll see you on Monday night. Thanks.